figure it out when you just keep going. It's a good part. Hi, I'm Eric Wind with GeoData Plus. Today on Hands in the Market, we're going to discuss how property values were impacted by Hurricane Sandy with a particular emphasis on raised homes, what they are, and how they're performing in the real estate market. To help discuss this topic, I invited an experienced appraiser and GeoData customer, Tom Loritano from LES Home Value. Tom, thanks for coming today. Appreciate it, Eric. Thanks for the invite. Tom, uh, tell us about yourself. Well, I've been appraising uh, on Long Island uh, with our firm since uh, 1985. And uh, right now we have uh, offices in Manhattan and Long Island. And we, we cover most of the areas that were affected by Sandy. And what Tom isn't saying is that uh, Tom's firm has actually been rated the number one residential appraisal firm for the past 16 years through Long Island Business News. Is that right? Yes, it is. A lot <laughs> of hard work put into that. I'm sure it is. All right, so let's talk about Sandy. In late 2012, Superstorm Sandy traveled across the Western Hemisphere from Jamaica to parts north of Long Island, inflicting billions of dollars in property damage and over 100 deaths. Those of us in New York, particularly in Long Island, have our stories about power outages, gas shortages, and property damage. Tom, you and I both live on the South Shore. I'm sure we have our war stories. Absolutely. I lived in, I lived in Amityville and from Long Beach out through Mariches. I don't know anybody who wasn't affected. Earlier today, I went on to GeoData to find out how property sales were affected by Hurricane Sandy. And what I found was, uh, you know, never mind. Tom, how were real estate values affected by Hurricane Sandy? You know, it, it, it all starts, you know, in two th late 2012, the residential cycle of uh, the market was coming out of the financial crisis, 07, 08, and it was just about getting some traction. And when Superstorm Sandy hit, it really set that back. And along the South Shore, the homes that were damaged, uh, waterfront properties, the Barrier Islands, and it really, it really stalled any kind of progress in recovery from the 07, 08 financial crisis. And since that time, since late 2012, we're just now seeing the effects of some kind of recovery to a lot of the, the communities that were affected the most. So these statistics might be useful, but it really doesn't tell us about the, the story of what happened right after the storm. What, what was your job like during that time? You know, right after the storm, um, I, again, I was right in the middle of it with my family. Uh, you, you just couldn't realize the, the extent of the, the damage, the extent of the seriousness of it. You know, when the National Guard's driving down Montauk Highway, protecting businesses and prote protecting homes, you realize that something very significant occurred. You know, as, as an appraisal company, what we did, um, we went out to the community at the bank. You know, we worked for many of the banks and mortgage companies and credit unions, and, you know, they wanted to make sure their assets were protected. We went from home to home of all the people in, in the bank's portfolios and uh, saw the damage firsthand and it, from all areas, Staten Island, Brooklyn, uh, the Barrier Islands, you know, Long Beach again, Seaford, uh, and all throughout the South Shore of Suffolk County. And, uh, you know, our appraisers, of which we have many, saw it firsthand. Uh, so from that point and the battles these communities have had with uh, insurances, flood insurance, uh, building back their communities has been uh, slow. But again, it's only been three years, and I think we're, we're a good way along. So that brings us to the topic of raised homes. For those of us who don't know, a raised home is exactly what it sounds like, a home whose height is elevated to avoid future floods. Tom, you've obviously dealt with a lot of these raised homes during Sandy. Tell us what you know about them. You know, raised homes uh, came about because of the flood insurance requirements that are happening right now. Uh, the government is, has redrawn their flood zone lines and uh, are requiring those homes that were damaged significantly uh, to be raised upon repair. Uh, this is new to Long Island. Uh, you know, it, it, it's seen sporadically throughout some of the Barrier Islands, Fire Island, and, and the like, uh, but it's, it's not anything that's been uh, witnessed before in Long Island. Uh, it is, does protect from future flooding, such as uh, what Sandy caused, uh, but I don't think um, the direct effect of values have been, uh, in, 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 in terms of statistics, have been determined as of yet. Mm. Yeah, the, um, the, the pros are obvious. It's obviously going to prevent against future floods. What do you think are some of the, the negatives, the drawbacks of that of them? You know, some of the things we've heard, and to, to tell you the truth, and we, we do a lot of analysis, we haven't seen any of these homes that have transferred or sold on the open market as of yet. 
Uh, a lot of them were built with uh, restrictions and grants uh, with a five-year uh, payout. So, you know, I would say in the next two to three years, uh, you might see some of these homes uh, hit the market, uh, go for sale, and then we'll have some data to uh, account for the, the valuation aspect of it. But in terms of, you know, the appeal of it, the marketability from a typical buyer, if you, know, if you have a home, obviously the raised homes are going to be renovated because they're newer. Uh, and you have a raised home that's new and a home that's next to it that's not raised that's also new, uh, there's pros and cons. I mean, some people uh, do not appreciate the fact that you have to go up a flight of stairs, uh, don't have the capability of going up a flight of stairs, uh, whether for their pets or their elderly parents or uh, small children uh, in terms of a safety aspect of it. Uh, so, you know, those homes that were built with an elevator or without an elevator, will have a direct effect on value. That's what, that's what we're going to, that's what we're seeing right now. Um, but the raised homes do not have that stigma. You know, we haven't talked about that yet. There's a stigma attached to uh, flooded homes. Uh, and that stigma, you know, we've did a lot of research uh, going back to Hurricane Katrina in, in uh, New Orleans. And uh, that stigma is, is about 20% of value that a typical buyer will not pay as much for a home that was flooded. Uh, so that stigma takes about five to seven years. Uh, in New Orleans, they're just starting to get come around to that. Uh, so when we talked about the statistics before in terms of valuation, uh, yes, in general, the values have come back. But those homes that were flooded, significantly flooded, flooded, and, and even though they were repaired, new, and everything else, it has to be disclosed that they were flooded. And uh, that stigma is, is sticking with those homes. So the, again, so the biggest difference between raised and not raised is the stigma of the potential of flooding or the history of flooding. So when you're appraising these properties, you're obviously not able to find that many comps that are other raised homes because they haven't sold yet. So how do you, what do you take into consideration when you appraise them? What we try to do, um, and again, based on the availability of data that we use from geodata and, and uh, the public sources, uh, local MLS and things like that, um, is we try to compare it to homes that are similar in, in uh, overall condition. Uh, I, I, like I said, the raised homes are typically renovated, updated, newer. Uh, there's a lot of newer renovated homes that aren't raised. And we, we attach that, we take that stigma. We add that stigma to it or take it away from, from the, the non-raised homes and uh, the valuation is supported based on that. So how does Geodata help you in that appraisal process? Well, the, the first thing is, you know, the, the amount of time it takes to research multiple communities uh, has been cut down. Uh, you know, when, when, we're, when we access a website that has all these communities at our fingertips, it makes it much easier to analyze and, and customize reports. So, you know, the importance of that to an appraiser, you know, it's all about time and uh, getting things done under, under the gun and, and uh, making sure they're, they're efficiently done and accurately done and professionally done. It's important to work with reliable data sources. So before I asked you what your job was like in 2012, right after Hurricane Sandy, now it's a little bit over three years later. I'm sure you're still dealing with those communities. What's it like now? No, absolutely. It is, it, it's, it's better. Uh, I think it has a long way to go. You know, we go into these communities and you know, I think Lindenhurst was, is actually the poster child for, for the storm damage. Um, many of the homes down there, we drive down there now, and uh, some homes haven't been raised, have been repaired. Some homes have been raised and repaired. There's board ups. There's homes that have been raised with just vacant land. Um, and I think this, this is a direct result of uh, where people stand in terms of being diligent with their insurance companies. Would you care to speculate on what the landscape, what the property values will look like three years from now? With or without another storm. <laughs> Hopefully without. <laughs> well, you know, uh, again, uh, I've, I've lived on the South Shore all my life, and this was a, a storm that was unprecedented. Everybody's had, had effects of it. Um, but futuristically, uh, with no storm, I still think we're, we're three to five years away from really these, these, these communities being fully marketable to the typical buyer, fully marketable to the waterfront buyer, you know, fully marketable to those people who 
are not afraid of flooding. So while at least economically, things are starting to rebound from Hurricane Sandy and property values are back on the rise, we just don't have enough data yet to know how raised homes are impacting the real estate market and how they're going to compare to their non-raised counterparts. And of course, there's just a lot more work to be done in the communities as well. Once again, Tom Loretano from LES Home Value. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I'm Eric Wind with Geodata Plus. Thank you for watching Hands on the Market. This is Mortgage News Network.